Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Praise our God. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, right on the corner of MLK and Union Avenue. Well, praise our God. Today, uh, we're studying the uh, Gospel of Luke, amen, and uh, we want to try to finish up on chapter 8. Uh, chapter 8 has been a very exciting and dynamic uh, chapter. Last week, uh, was focusing on all in a normal day of ministry for Jesus Christ. And we're going to focus on that again. Listen, uh, by way of review, uh, we learned that Jesus uh, healed uh, the, Gadarene, the Gadarene demonic, delivered him from a legion of demons, which could have been anywhere from 2,000 to six or 8,000 demons. Amen. Uh, the people of the city, uh, when they came to Jesus, they found the man clothed in his right mind. Uh, when a herdsman of the 2,000 or more swine that drowned, when the demons went in them, uh, when they shared it to the townspeople, uh, they were so afraid. And they asked Jesus, to leave their coast. Amen. And so when he went back on the other side, there was a multitude waiting for him. Uh, glad to see him. Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, ready to receive from him. Amen. Well, praise our God. And the Bible says, uh, uh, as Jesus moved in this multitude, uh, doing whatever he was doing, the Bible said uh, that there was a ruler of the synagogue that came to him, uh, Jairus, falling on his face, asking Jesus to heal his only daughter who was near death. We see the willingness of Jesus to come and minister to of uh, this man and his family. And as Jesus was making his way through the crowd uh, that was strong in him, um, getting to this man's house, because there was a sense of urgency because the man says she was near death. And Jesus says, I'll come. And, uh, but it was a crowd pressing against him that certainly was hindering their uh, movement. But even in the midst of this crowd, there was a woman with an issue of blood, having suffered for 12 years, but not getting any, any better, okay? And she had heard about Jesus, and she had come to this place of faith where she said, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. And you can imagine this woman was weak, uh, 12 years of suffering, uh, getting worse, spending all that she had, but nevertheless, uh, she was mustering up enough faith to get through that crowd so that I could just touch the hem of his garment. I know I would be made whole, amen? And the scriptures let us know that her faith, when she touched him, made a demand on the healing power of God. Her faith made a demand on the healing power of God. Biblical faith, can't be denied. <coughs> Biblical faith can't be denied. God is a faith God. And by that, I mean he responds to our faith. Now, someone says, well, no, he's going to respond to my tears. No, he's going to respond to your faith. Now, I know he says, I see those tears and I, you know, but he's a faith God. 
Now, he can do anything he wants to do, okay? But as a rule, he responds to your faith, okay? And in the midst of that massive crowd uh, pressing in on him, uh, in the midst of Jesus making his way to uh, ja uh, Jairus' house, amen, Jesus stopped. And he said, who touched me? And the disciples thought he was losing his mind. Master, this crowd is thronging thee. And you ask, who touched you? Jesus says, somebody touched me, for I felt healing virtue go out of me. That woman's faith made a demand on the healing power of God, and virtue came out of Jesus. He stopped, and he said, who touched me? <laughs> and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she began to tell him the whole story. And Jesus said to her, your faith has made you hold. Well, praise our God. Amen. And this just uh, uh, gave, us, gave us a glimpse of, of a normal day in the ministry of Jesus. Just say glimpse in the normal day of ministry of Jesus. And so today we want to talk about a normal day in the ministry of Jesus, part two. A normal day in the ministry of Jesus, part two. Amen? Well, I want to say from the beginning, Satan desires to steal or kill your faith. Kill your children, your family. Kill you. Listen. Let's start with Luke. Chapter 8, verse 47. Just going to pick up a little bit about this woman with the issue of blood and go right into him going to Jairus', Jairus house. Okay, here we go. Verse 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Amen. Notice, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee the whole. Thy faith has made the whole. What do you need from God today? You can receive it by faith. He wants to do it. So I want you to see the willingness of Jesus to go with Jairus to minister to him. Amen. I want you to see the kindness and comfort and the tender mercy of Jesus. He spoke to this woman. He didn't rebuke her, said, hey, you know, you were unclean. You shouldn't have been out in this crowd. And on and on. He says, your faith has made you whole. Praise our God. I like to also say he didn't drag her healing out. Okay? Some people think God wants to drag the healing out. Forever. That's not the will of God. He didn't put that thing on that woman for 12 years. It wasn't God who was dragging her healing out. He had made provision in his word for the children of Israel to get healed. That provision was there for that woman as well. And I... It's true that the religious community, that the atmosphere of the day was not about trusting God for healing, or perhaps they were just going to believe that only prophets could minister. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking, okay? That reminds me of the uh, beautiful uh, well, uh, the beautiful gate where all those sick folk were around that water, waiting for the angel to stir the water, and then whoever entered in first would heal. But God had provision in his word for all of them to be healed. And somehow uh, the enemy had got them to narrow it down to that pool there. And that mother too was waiting for the water to be stirred. Instead of focusing on faith in the living God, they were the covenant children of Abraham. And God said that he had put 
that he was going to put our sickness and disease on Messiah when he came, but he told them uh, that he was going to take all sickness and disease away from them. And David testified in Psalms 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. I said there were provision in the word of God for their healing, but they were not walking in it, just like we are not walking in it. But their provision. We are afraid of COVID. We're afraid of this. Preachers are afraid. They don't want to go do ministry because they're afraid they're going to catch something. But nothing kills faith like fear. But nothing kills fear like faith. And faith comes by hearing the word. We got to hear the word. We got to meditate on the word. We got to uh, speak the word, sing the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then we need to act on it, okay? Faith, faith, faith. He said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. And I want you to, I want you to see how the devil works here now. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying unto him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made holy. Fear not, Jesus said, because nothing kills faith like fear. And there was an attack of the enemy here, to try to kill this man faith, to try to uh, 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 instill in him a spirit of fear and doubt to cause him to give up hope. When Jesus heard, now it was a well-intentioned servant, but he was allowing the devil to use him, just like the devil was using Peter when Peter said to Jesus, you know, uh, he didn't want Jesus to go through to Jerusalem. And Jesus said, uh, uh, I rebuke thee, Satan, get thee behind me. You know, Peter didn't know it. He was well-intentioned, but Satan was using him to come against the will of God for Jesus. And Satan was using this servant. He said, trouble not the master. It was no trouble for Jesus. He was ready to go. He was on his way there. Trouble not the master. Uh, he's not troubled with your prayers. He's not troubled with your concern. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to allow him to help him. He's not troubled. That's a lie of the devil. Trouble not the master. Your daughter is dead. I find that demon spirit. And Jesus heard it. He said, fear not. Only believe, he says. And she shall be made whole. The scripture asks, whose report are you going to believe? That's a good question. Whose report am I going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? I tell you, I said that Satan is a thief. He's a killer. He comes to steal. He comes to rob. He comes to kill. And he wants to kill your faith. He wants to kill your influence. He wants to kill your children. He wants to kill you. Now, listen. Amen. The scripture tells us in John 10, uh, verses 10 and 11, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus says, I am come that you might have life, that you might have life, that you might have life. He says, and I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, not just what you barely need, not, not just enough to get you barely by, but I've come that you might have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now, Satan could not get the woman with the issue of blood to lose her faith. Amen. 
He couldn't get that woman with the issue of the blood to become discouraged and give up on life after 12 years of suffering and spending all her living. Oh, he couldn't get that woman to commit suicide. I'm sure he tried to do that, just like he's trying to do to some of you. But the devil's a liar. Jesus has to answer. And if you could commit suicide, as soon as you kill yourself, you're going to be a million times worse immediately. Don't let the devil sell you on that lie. Jesus says, I come that you might have life. <coughs> Excuse me. And have it more abundantly. I bind a spirit of suicide off the hearts and minds of everyone who are hearing my voice. I bind a spirit of discouragement and depression off the minds of everyone that's hearing my voice in the name of Jesus. He couldn't get that woman to lose faith. She said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, even though that crowd was uh, uh, around her, around him, even though she was weak, but she was determined by God's grace, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. And like I said last week, I don't know whether she was about to give up, a falling as she fell. I don't know, but she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And when she touched him, Jesus stopped and he says, who touched me? <laughs> you can touch him like that right now as you exercise faith. Faith is believing what God said. Unbelief is believing what the devil says. Doubt is when you halt between the two opinions. It doesn't take much faith. For if you have faith, that's a grain of mustard seed. Jesus said, you can say that tree be plucked up and, and cast into the sea. It will obey you. It doesn't take much faith. Just no doubt. She received her healing. She says, if I can but just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. And she was. It was the devil who put the sickness on Jairus' uh, daughter. Uh, Jairus' daughter, okay? I said it was the devil who put the sickness on Jairus' daughter. He wanted to kill her. The devil wanted to kill her through premature death. And now he used a well-intentioned servant to crush the father's faith and the father's hope based on the outward circumstances that he saw, which was very normal. But we, we were dealing with Jesus now. Amen. And Jesus don't care nothing about normal circumstances. And what he cares about is that you believe that he can do it. All right. Jesus is Lord of every circumstance of your life that you may face. Now, we talked about that about three or four sermons ago, and you need to go back on YouTube and find it. Jesus is Lord of every circumstances of your life. Well, praise God. Whatever you may face. In Luke 8, 48, Luke 8, 48, amen, praise our God. In Luke 8, 48, and, uh, <laughs> and we're trying to uh, see what this thing here is doing for us. In uh and he said to her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. And while yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying unto him, thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, fear not. Believe only. And she shall be made whole. And I said to you, fear not. Believe only. I'm saying to someone, fear not. But believe only. Amen. Verse 51, and when he came into the house, he's at Jairus' house now. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in. Say Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. Now, <laughs> amen. Peter, James, John, and the parents. All right? Verse 52, and all wept. There were these professionals who would come around and 
and mourn and, and weep uh, according to the occasion. They could even be hired to do it. And so when they got there, <laughs> the father just getting back, his servants or whoever had already hired these professional mourners as well as family members. And so there they were, all wept and bewailed her. But Jesus says, weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. They were like, what a fool we have before us. He put them all out and took her by the hand. Listen, Jesus took her, put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, said, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Okay? So let's just look at some things here. First of all, Jesus put out all unbelief. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. In many cases, whether we're sharing the gospel, we need to get the unbelief out. We can't be sharing the gospel with somebody and a bunch of unbelievers around there. They're going to hinder, you know? Amen. You know, Jesus could not do many mighty works when he went to his own hometown because of the unbelief. He marveled at the unbelief, okay? And so, uh, so he got rid of all the unbelief. Amen. Yeah, praise God. The Bible says, when he came in the house, he suffered no man to go in and say, Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, weep not, for she is not dead. She sleepeth. They laughed in the scorn, knowing that she was dead. He put them all out. Yeah, they laughed in the scorn. And that's what's going to happen to you again. You begin to talk about miracles, they're going to laugh at you and talk about you and tell you how stupid you are. But you need to keep the faith. And you need to go ahead and claim those promises and pray, not only for yourself, but for others also. Listen, we cannot fear COVID-19. Satan is a murderer, he's a thief, and he's a killer. And we've got to stand against COVID-19 in the spirit realm. I'm not telling you what you're going to do about that shot, COVID, that vaccination. That's up to you. But listen, we've got to stand against the spirit of COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. We've got to pray over our families and our churches in the name of Jesus. We've got to pray over our own life in the name of Jesus, because it's a devil who's a thief and a killer. And the world's not going to believe you, but you got to believe God. You cannot confess fear and walk in faith at the same time. You cannot confess fear and walk in faith at the same time. If you plan to walk in the supernatural, you must get it settled deep in your spirit, not to worry about what folks think, what they say, what they do. They laughed him to scorn, but it did not shake Jesus. Satan was using all this to shake Jesus' faith, shake his confidence. You want to remember, Jesus was in the flesh, <laughs> just like you're in the flesh, okay? Satan was using all this to shake his faith. His confidence, but it did not work. Jesus had it settled. He knew who he was. He was the blameless son of God. All right? No doubt about this time, feelings and emotion will kick in and, and make you feel and, uh, 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 doubt, make you feel unbelief. And, and, and he probably used those tactics on Jesus. The Bible says he's tempting all men like we, yet without sin. Listen. But what did Jesus say in verse 50? Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. <laughs> Praise our God. He did not allow uh, the nine uh, that come with him, but only Peter, James, and John. Now, Jesus was trained in 12. But there were three that he spent a lot more time with. And somebody says, well, why? Well, he saw something in them. Amen? Now, I don't He spent more time with the 12 than the 70 or whoever else. Okay? But, 
But Peter, James, and John, he spent more time with them than the other nine. Peter, James, and John were with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. The other nine were down at the bottom of the mountain. Okay? I say they were, they, the three, Peter, James, and John, were ready for more. Uh, they were ready to believe more. They were ready to walk in more. The other nine were not yet ready to raise the dead. <laughs> it came to pass, though. I mean, but praise God. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 9, amen, verse 39 through 41, we see Peter exercising that, uh, what he saw Jesus do. It says, then Peter rose and went with them. This uh, uh, Dorcas, uh, 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 or Lydia, or whatever name you want to use here, uh, had died. They had dressed her. And they know that Peter was nearby, so they, they sent for Peter, okay? Peter got there. They were weeping and, and showing them all kinds of garments that she had made for them while she lived. Verse 40 says, but Peter put them all forth. He got out the unbelief, okay? Put them all out. Then he kneeled down and prayed. And then turning to the body, he says, Tabitha, arise, just like Jesus did. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saint, saints and widows, presented her alive. Amen. Praise our God. Yes, sir. Going back to um, chapter 8 of Luke, uh, Jesus, amen. Jesus put them all out, verse 54. And he took her by the hand and called, said, made, arise. Amen. Peter learned it, how to do that from Jesus. Amen. Verse 55. And her spirit came in again, and she arose. And straightway he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Well, praise our God. And somebody says, oh, this was all in the day of ministry in Jesus. What outstanding and powerful ministry. Now, the Bible says, as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, we put on Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, we are willing to agree that we put on his righteousness. And we said, I'm the righteousness of God uh, in Christ. Okay? Uh, well, did we put on his love for the Father? Uh, did we also put on his commitment? Come on, we've been clothed with Christ. What does that mean? Did we put on his anointing? Did we put on his power, his ability? Did we put on his anointing, his power to minister? <laughs> well... Praise our God. Then we put on his faith. Then we put on his love for the Father. What does it mean that I am clothed with Christ? What can I identify with Christ? About? What can I claim? Amen. Uh, meditate on this thing. As many of you are baptized into Jesus Christ, you put on Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, I like 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 13, I think in terms of, of the Holy Ghost baptizing me in Christ, not me. And I'm taking a drink of that same spirit. For by one spirit, uh, have we all been baptized in one body and we made the drink. To me, that's Holy Ghost baptizing us in Christ, not some man. But, but I want you to think about what it means. If I'm literally baptized into Christ, you know, Galatians says it, uh, chapter 3 or 2, as many of us as baptized into Jesus Christ, put on Christ, okay? Listen, 328 perhaps. Uh, what does that mean? What does that mean to put on Jesus Christ? Think about what that must mean. Well, praise God. Uh, next week, we're going to look at uh, where Jesus sends out the 12, and we're going to go on and show where he fed the uh, 5,000, okay? All in a day's ministry, uh, all in a day of ministry, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Well, praise God. This is a listener-supported ministry, and you can sow seed through Giblify, amen.com, the Church of God of Cleveland, uh, Church of God of Cleveland, 11100 Union Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio. Amen. Uh, the Lord bless you. The Lord smile on you, shed his countenance upon you, and the Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.